So hi to all. Hope you are all fine despite of this uh, Corona crisis. So I welcome you to Shankar IAS Academy. Today we are going to deal about uh, orientation for the entire test. So when I say orientation, you will be having the syllabus, dates and all. Now I'm not here to explain those things. I'll just tell you how to prepare and how to deal with the tests. What, what, what are the things you should not do? What are the things you should be doing necessarily for the entire test batch? And I will also speak about exactly what are the topics that will come for the test one quality, how to read them, overall quality, how questions are asked. So how to read the book? You should not linearly read it. First time when you have read the quality book, linearly you would have read. Now you have to focus on certain areas so as to prepare exactly for the examination. So I'm give you, I'm going to give you that orientation, how to focus, at which area to focus. You know, so that I, I will have some techniques, I'll do that. Okay, and also exactly in the test, what you have to do, test taking strategy. Okay, that will also be okay, how to approach the questions, how many rounds you have to take, what is the maximum questions you have to give. Like that, you know, those things also I'll be dealing. Serious year questions also I'll be dealing with. Some few questions, for example, you know, so those dilemma questions, how to handle them. Okay, what is the strategy that I'll be telling you? Okay. okay. So first, let us uh, discuss the overall test taking strategy. How you should prepare for the tests, how you have to take the tests. Of course, you will be thinking, okay, syllabus is there, test syllabus is there. And based on that, I'm going to prepare. Fine. Now, the first point I just wanted to tell you is de-link your preparation and test. When I say this, it should be deal two different things. Yes, the first test quality, this is the syllabus. You have to cover that syllabus. But you should not hold yourself on that itself, that alone. You should be fast forwarding yourself. Don't just think, okay, these five topics they have given, I've read this, happy. I'm going to stop it. No. Okay. You have to go ahead. And more, sometimes what will happen, the test syllabus will be more, you would have prepared less. So the day before the test, you will decide, I will not take the test. First blunder, major blunder. In UPSC, you will never be satisfied. How much ever you read, you won't be satisfied. You won't feel like you are prepared for the test. Okay. So if you are preparing continuously, whatever plan is there, okay, even if you're feeling that your preparation is inadequate, don't worry, take the test. Okay. Because uh, test taking is completely a different thing. It, it gives you a... A type of experience which you will face in the examination all so you have to prepare for that knowledge will gain in the course of the test taking okay so after the test there will be test discussion and then you will also be evaluating you will be taking the question and analyzing where it went wrong so in that process your knowledge will add up it will not reduce okay so the first rule is dealing your preparation and test which means you will be going along with the syllabus yes of the test but in case if you are completing the syllabus soon don't waste the time, cover extra areas. Supposing if you have not covered the uh, uh, syllabus, okay, or you, you feel that some, some, something better should be done, but then also don't worry, attend the test. Missing test is a great blender. Don't do that mistake. Do take the test regularly. Now, uh, what is the area of coverage? Okay, you have to prioritize always, okay, in your preparation. Okay, you have to priority, give priority. Okay, I've told you in class, this is for newcomers. Okay, so the four core subjects, polity, economy, geography, and modern history. And you may ask, sir, science and technology, they're asking a lot of questions. Governance, they're asking questions. Everything will be covered in current affairs. Don't worry. And art and culture, how much ever you study. Okay, in four or five questions, they're asking only two questions you can answer. answer. So if you have completed one basic book for art and culture, which is next priority second priority you could answer okay but right now this is the priority area so here you try to cover as much as possible current affairs how many years current affairs as general rule it is one year current affair okay so june 27th means from june 2020 you start covering the current affairs that will be suffice okay uh, i got a message after this 2020 friends that said they have asked current affairs question from 2016 onwards which means you have prepared on 2016 that the same current affairs would have been repeated once again in 2019. That is why they have asked in 2020. So if some of your seniors are saying they are asking current affairs from 2-3 years backwards, that will be very rare, one or two questions. Majorly, 
majorly it will be within one year only so don't waste your time okay thinking that from 2016 you have to study don't waste your time to complete the recent one year current affairs first that itself is very bulky okay then uh, the method of covering one your 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 own notes plus one monthly magazine your own notes plus one monthly magazine okay so whatever you have missed can be covered okay or if you have not have the habit of uh, you know reading newspaper okay so we have this uh, civil speedia okay so they concise and give you no know, everyday video the same time you apply for newspaper you can apply there or take two magazines two monthly magazines and uh, you know you cover it cover the current affairs okay ias parliament is one uh, magazine that you can rely upon so if you cover like this no each year they are asking about 15 questions on an average from each of the uh, subjects okay so that is quality economy geography and all and you may be asking sir no last last year they had a difference in geography they asked only five questions in uh, 2020 in current affairs no questions came okay maximum if you search the entire question paper you can find four questions from current affair okay but remember overall there were 60 questions from four subjects this is a general trend in the upsc overall okay covering all four you no know, definitely there will be 60 if they are reducing in economy this time they have increased in uh, sorry they have increased in quality as well as economy you know if you count the 2020 paper 2019 paper 2015 16 17 you will find that it will be there. current affairs usually 35 this time it was not there okay because agriculture the, those areas you know they increased the number of questions environment this is unexpected but however one would have followed the current affairs definitely could have covered that areas okay and could have completed it so uh, see in the 60 itself average what would be the cutoff the cutoff a person should get is 100 let us take 100 as the cutoff so 50 questions if correctly comes then you can clear this examination why do you worry for remaining 50 so the point is when you cover this major areas plus current affairs already you are in if you are uh, many of you know like we cat another wall like uh, you would have missed the prelims examination by 3 marks 2 marks 4 marks like that that is because in any one of these subjects you would have completely left it or you would not have completed your preparation okay so the principle that i give you in your entire preparation is cover coverage as much as possible your coverage okay i usually i say in this class don't stagnate very important this is the biggest problem don't stagnate in between in any place don't get stagnated so supposing in a particular topic for example you are reading indian polity fundamental rights uh, part you know you are taking lot of time fastly read it and go to the next topic I, if at all it is a important topic you can give additionally a uh, half an hour that's all after that you know you should not be keep uh, breaking your head on a single topic okay instead of that if you read easy topics you will cover maximum okay so remember please cover as much as possible uh, in all these core subjects as well as see when i don't mention other subjects it doesn't mean other subjects are less priority they are second priority first complete this it will give you confidence your scores will be always higher then you can you know pick up you know marks from the other areas also so you can fortify yourself so cover as much as possible please you know never ever stagnate don't hold on to a topic hold on to a particular subject okay so it's like running race keep on running okay like a marathon once you reach okay if you stop somewhere you will not reach even the first round or the second round done now individual tests overall preparation i told you okay how to take so overall four primary subjects plus current affairs and you should keep covering you should not stagnate okay so those points and delinking your preparation test that is very important an individual test what you have to do usually i have seen my own students uh, they will take the test okay uh in this uh, area okay they will answer only to those questions they have read the same thing will be in upsc in upsc what you know will be little only only 30 40% other things and all you have to think there and try to arrive at the answer so likewise do that thinking part here itself attempt questions try to give answers only when you make failures here you will be able to learn see there is a phrase if you shed sweat in the practice field if you shed sweat in the practice field no need to shed blood in the battle field that is why we are having this test okay that's why we are having this test so you have to make maximum number of attempts so you will come to know what are the maximum number of mistake how you are making mistake why you are making mistake you can rectify yourself 
don't play safe in the tests okay don't uh, you know answer only the area you know you have to answer almost all the area and how many questions to answer initial first four five test don't worry about the mark okay, more than 95 should be a target i would say in the ups examination it is 80 to 85 if it is difficult for example to 2019 pep, 2020 paper means 80 it is other papers means 85 to 90 you can go easy paper now he, your practice to take more number of questions always when you are taking less number of questions if negative questions goes no even if you know if you are well read you may lose the examination so always you know cover more number of questions and uh, this uh, we, you will do you will listen to the discussion and you will add more information to the question and you will go and research on the option why this option is given why this option won't come so all those things you learn in the discussion okay that can be done by the faculty also but one thing all of us will forget to document what is that how you made the mistake see overall the faculty may say this is the major mistake would have done based on assumptions okay and they can explain more information give more idea more clarity but you only know where you have made the mistake you would have known the concept but silly mistake would have done you would have missed a word or you have not saw the not word or you have not clearly eliminated the option you were in a hurry or you have marked wrongly in the oma paper okay so individually you will know what kind of wrong you did in that question you have to write it down immediately next to that question not only the additional information given by the faculty in the test discussion what exactly why exactly you went wrong on the question if you didn't know the question at all you just attempted just put okay question from uh, not prepared area or you know the area but you know you are not clear in the concept clear concept is not clear then uh, if you are uh, uh, made a silly mistake silly mistake if you have not noted all the options if you have noted a particular word okay you have uh, overlooked the word then you say overlook the word like that you know give comments on the technicality i would call this technicality not the academic knowledge uh, the technicality of question taking okay where you technically failed okay so that points has to be make note and after uh, um, you know analyzing for all the question take the first page of the question and in first question what is the major mistake you are making are you overlooking the words uh, or you know you are not able to understand the question or uh, you are leaving the options what is your major problem list it down just going to the next test you have to read that and go 100% your uh, you know uh, wrongs will not be repeated we repeat our wrongs because we fail to document our wrongs the greatest civilizations in world whether it is indian civilization or chinese civilization or uh, egyptian civilization or the jews okay you just watch them why their civilization succeed they have documented their faults all the religious scriptures is nothing but you know record of the faults so they are able to progress faster okay and you know people in religion they ask to read bhagavad gita again and again to read bible again and again quran again again why to remind the mankind that these are the mistakes so they resist the mistakes easily likewise you also document your technical mistakes not only academic mistakes okay this point you have missed okay so technical mistakes you have to make a record of and then go for the next test and progressiveness you have to record the marks like report card no for each test you have to record the marks okay and see whether there is progress uh, sometimes this will be happening okay middle india usually we will not uh, read much all of us okay because that area questions rarely asked even if they are asking they last from the art and culture part only or if one direct question one direct question for that we need not read that much okay in fact the volume of medieval history is much so now uh, so if there is a test on uh, uh, medieval india definitely your scores will be less so when you are making the comparison don't make exact face to face comparison that is wrong that is wrong okay so you have to leave the extreme tests so supposing if i am taking a test batch no uh, polity paper i will not take that mark at all because i am teaching polity for 9 years and if i am going to take that marks as my average mark no that won't reflect my preparation so mid- fully medieval india paper that also i'll skip other areas which i have covered that in that i'll compare and see whether i'm progressing okay many of you feel defeated feel demotivated when you get less scores in a non important area so when we go for the test coverage area no sometimes we will have to segregate the syllabus in such a way that you know not much question will come from that particular test but still it has to be covered because it is part of the syllabus we cannot skip it no 
So in those tests, when you're getting less score, don't get demotivated. Go ahead. And one more thing is, uh, if you are the first time you are taking exclusive test batch, not a repeater, initially for the first four tests, your score will be very bad. Sometimes it may go negative also, 10, 20, because I, I have asked you to attempt more number of questions. No? So when you attempt more number of questions, more number of negatives, your score will be less. But the first four tests, what is your idea? To learn the technique, to learn where you are making mistake. So don't worry about your mark. Leave okay or don't get demotivated okay just think that okay this time i've got this score i have potential to improve i've noted down all the academic or understanding where i went wrong technically also where i went wrong i've noted down so now i'll be doing efficiently okay like that motivate yourself and keep in the run now next is we have to talk about the techniques that should be followed during that test okay first of all there are different types of questions okay Types of questions means I'm not dealing with uh, telling that uh, it is a two line question. I like that. I'm not describing the question. Based on your test taking, you no, know, you should categorize okay, the questions. What is the type of questions? Okay, you have to categorize inside the examination or inside during the test. So before categorizing, I will left an important point. Read the instructions properly. Okay, we will directly jump and read. suddenly they may I know add many new things, you may miss the point. Okay, so especially in CSAT paper and all, no, read the instruction. You see, in case of CSAT paper, generally at least CSAT paper will make a slight uh, turnover of the pages. Okay, to see in which area the questions are. So accordingly, you can prepare your strategy, set your mind. Okay, so this year that was the problem. There was a lot of mental ability questions. People uh, got shocked question by question. But if you have just started the question paper, your mind would ready. Okay, there are more number of mental ability questions. So Definitely easy mental ability questions you have to take and go. But GS paper, no issues. Okay. You, only thing is you have to check whether all the uh, question sheets are there. Okay. So all page number is correct. Like that you check it. So read the instructions properly and then categorize the questions. How we have to categorize the questions? Okay. First, you have to you know, call those questions sure short or sitters question. Meaning very easy questions for you. Not, I'm not saying for everybody because inside the examination all you don't know okay whether it is a easy question difficult question and all so whichever question is you know easy questions for you call it as short short questions it has to be taken in the first round it has to be taken in the first round itself first round itself okay so at least three rounds you can take okay because you have to cover as many as questions you should not stagnate in the question paper in one question if you are breaking the head you will not be able to answer easy questions. So first, try to answer easy questions. Difficult ones can be dealt later. Always remember this. So sure shot, easy questions for you in the examination hall. It should go for the uh, first round. And uh, the sure shot questions, mark in the OMR also simultaneously. That will save time, that will give confidence. But in case of uh, you know, the other questions, 50-50 type, which means if four options are there, you will be able to eliminate two options. Two options will get confusion. That type of questions are called as 50-50 type questions. Okay. So in the first round itself, what you have to do is sure shot questions. You have to mark in the OMR. No need to make any sign for the sure shot questions because you have already answered it. Okay. So no mark on them. But 50-50 type of questions, no. If you decided that two is able to be eliminated, having a doubt, you are having dilemma between two options. Don't overthink. Very important. Don't overthink. Leave the question there. Leave it for the second round. 50 50 type question. Leave it for second round. But you must remember, you must make some symbol. Okay. Because you must know, know what type of categorization you have given. Okay. So leave it for second round and make some symbol. Okay. So for example, I will make a survey. Okay. Suppose question number 11. Well, 50 50. I will make round. So, in the second round when I am coming, I need not see the questions which is not at all marked. And I will not see other symbols. I will just look for only circle questions. So, I save a lot of time. See, most of the time, aspirants waste time by rereading questions which you will never answer again again. Suppose one question is there, question number 15. Completely you don't know the question. It is better to give a symbol. You don't read it at all in the next, second round, third round. So, you save time. Every time you read a question which you never know at all, you are wasting time. So that is why in the 50-50 type, you have to give a, give a symbol, okay, some kind of symbol you have to give. So that you can look at in the second round. Then uh, there is another type of uh, question, okay, in between if you have doubts, 
uh, hold on you know, after the oh, after this discussion you know, this topic is over i'll give you time for asking them then we have a type of question where one option eliminated question so these questions has to be taken only when you are have not having enough number of questions okay and it should be taken only in the third round make some symbol you can use your own symbols no i will uh, you know i generally prefer uh, to use a symbol like this so uh, double cross so that you know which means this is be read in the third round so after first round is first round itself i make making this uh, markings when i come to the second round uh, these questions i leave because it is high risk questions the chance of these questions becoming wrong is higher because you are able to eliminate only one option so better to go for 50 50 type of questions in the second round then in the third round you can uh, deal with these questions then uh, uh, you you will not be eliminate uh, the questions but uh, there is a type of questions called as instinct based questions what is instinct based questions you are not eliminate but looking at the question sharply you will say okay this should be the answer somewhere your you know mind will throw up the answer okay so that also you make a mark some mark okay this also third round definitely take these questions in the third round okay because now your mind is warmed up but remember don't take instinct based questions in the first round because you know every question you will feel instinct answers that is a big issue okay so first your mind should warm up to that test taking uh, scenario okay so the first and second round leave it third round definitely take the instinct questions maximum correct will come so that is why in the first round itself when you feel that some confidence in that question mark give us uh, some uh, some things okay so i'll just give a mark like this okay so that you know we can go to that round the instinct based questions your mark give a marking and you're taking the third round and then then there is another questions called as not at all known questions unknown questions meaning you not know nothing you can't even understand that question okay that area you think that like you know art and culture questions usually you will feel as if you know you're left inside a desert or an island so at that time you just put a mark don't worry okay sometimes you will be you basically will be touching ego for example buddhism how, how much ever you question and you prepare for buddhism okay every year they last question from buddhism and every year it will be difficult and you will feel like i read so much of thing i you know i should touch the question don't do that mistake if you don't know it is a factual purely factual question accept it okay think that you will deal with deal in some other questions and leave that put a another symbol okay for unknown questions for unknown questions usually what i do is i take a bold decision okay i'll just strike across the question so that i am not tempted to look at the question again so decision making once again you know the upsc wants you to decide then and there so first round is all about categorizing and then answering only the short short questions then you go for the second and third round questions now what you have to do uh, after the first round okay you have to calculate your score approximate calculation after categorization of the question you have to go for approximate calculation so i how i will do it you see in omr it is easy for counting if you count 4 4 like that if you count like literally 1 2 3 4 you will miss some number in between so once again you will start counting in counting itself you will waste a lot of time okay so the easy way of counting is count in clusters 4 4 okay so 4 dots 4 8 then 12 16 like that okay so count in clusters you will not miss the count counting will also complete faster and you will not need to repeat the count because i, I have experienced this in my 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 uh, test series and all first time and all i will used to literally count that will take lot of time 10 minutes 15 minutes sometimes you know sometimes it gives shocks also for you uh, once again you know to recount to ensure okay so to avoid recounting like us elections no you have to count in clusters okay count in clusters so you will be now confident enough because you now usually if you are prepared well as it should if you have covered the enough syllabus current affairs fully this four topics well uh, all the topics all the areas we have covered definitely in the first round itself okay 30 to 35 questions will come or if at least 25 is coming be happy you are off the way off the well fast and you know if you do this way uh, within 45 minutes of the examination this begin you would have covered all 100 questions because you are not overthink on the difficult questions you are not overthinking on the dilemma questions you are leaving it for the second third round so when the first round is over okay 25 to 30 questions you have fortified you are sure that you will get that marks and also you have One one hour fifteen minutes extra, and you have also categorized the question so you can aram say deal with the difficult questions slowly. So remember, 
in uh, test taking also keep a watch before you and see to that the first round is completed in 45 minutes next after calculating the score now you go for the second now in second also if you are taking once again more than 30 seconds in a question second time you know by the time first uh, first round you have gone now your mind will be uh, very effectively working so second time you are seeing the 50 50 questions you will be able to identify the correct answer but that time also you are feeling no sir uh, i'm not confident i'm not able to eliminate this don't overthink okay 30 to 40 seconds okay maximum 1 minute after that leave the question and go to the next question because among the 50 50 questions no maybe the last 50 50 type of questions you marked everything you know but beginning two to two three questions once again may create your trouble for you okay so 50 50 questions which you marked once again if it gives you a dilemma for 30 minutes and more immediately you go for completing okay the all the things okay then you can come and see the difficult one difficult ones can be treated later see simple if you pick the easy sticks you have enough fire wood for your uh, cooking you know there is it's a proverb actually now if you see a tree you want to cut the bark of the tree you will spend 6 hours 8 hours okay like or even out two day three day to cut you know and use that but if you just pick the firewood which has fallen branches which has fallen from the tree okay that itself is enough for cooking that day the next day you can come and you know pick the easy ones this is a, uh, what i am talking about the upsc preparation also pick the easy ones first then we can deal with the difficult one so now first round and second round completed itself you should have come around 80 that is the best preparation if you are not coming around uh, 80 then go for the third round third round is only when you have not reached 80 questions in the first two rounds if you have reached 80 questions in the first two, two rounds leave it you are safe don't take risk so in the first two rounds itself you know you are crossing 75 to 80 safer side thank god and 100% you clear you clear it only when you are having the shortage of questions then to deal with the shortage go for the third questions third round the third round also first you have to look for the easy questions first so that you know see whether you are able to cross that magic figure of 80 don't go linearly so first round is very crucial if you do the categorization properly second and third round you know that can be done very slowly and you can pick the easy questions and answer see the the, the very bad thing about us is we will not leave things we will stick to something you know thinking that how come this small question you know is unanswerable i will answer then only i'll go to the next question there will be difficult questions are for around 30 to 35 for all even the toppers okay even the toppers in prelims okay they also will make mistakes or they will also not know few questions so 20 to 25 questions will really come wrong to them but you know they would have put 90 so 90 minus 20 70 in that 70 once again for 26 marks only will go so 64 marks so 64 64 60 60 120 130 30. see high how high the score is okay so that is why put more and uh, when you put more if more uh, answer to be correct your preparation coverage should be there and uh, your test taking also it should be a comprehensive test taking you should correct your mistakes as well as you should uh, enhance your concept clarity so they should go hand in hand parallelly don't mix up things so this is about you know the test taking skills okay i have told you please do apply that when you practice it only the strategy will go into your mind okay and and csat paper this will be heavily helpful my students have used this in csat they have picked up the easy questions easy question itself 35 many of them have been stuck with the difficult questions 5 to 10 questions and they wasted their entire time see max csat problem is in one question you uh, keep thinking no some 20 to 30 minutes aram se will go without even you are aware that time is flying okay, because you will be intensively thinking so that is why don't overthink i give you an another basic principle think but don't overthink think in the examination apply logic when you feel that you are overthinking move on to the next question now uh, we have to talk these are the uh, topics for polity okay in the first test make note of these topic historical background you know less importance you can fastly read it but it is less less priority fastly complete them and how to read historical background you know just don't memorize the drafting committees don't memorize the what happened in which act so indian constitution you are reading you know, federalism parliamentary form of government decentralization okay uh, joint electorate reservation for scst okay so go and see in which you know it has initiated that's all
for example uh, you know separate electorate 1909 they will start the 1932 communal award will be there okay then pune pact will be there all these things you know has uh, resulted in reservation for scst and joint electorate in the indian constitution so if you link and read now you will remember easily decentralization 1861 act they start decentralization from 1861 act federalism 1935 act so first go to the idea in the constitution and then go to the root and connect the roots so lakshmi ganth would have done like you know what has done in every act that is very difficult you will not remember everything so federalism what where which which acts okay so if you analyze and read itself things will get into your mind secularism okay so you go go back and see okay what is the need for secularism communal award was given for muslims also it was exempt to muslims partition of bengal 1905 so that uh, along with surat split okay so those things and all uh, you can uh, mark so that you can easily remember the historical background for the like uh, you know leaders also nehru what is his character he is a prime minister so union powers committee he will be heading minorities commission minorities uh, committee uh, headed by uh, patel okay so think like you know some people are accusing that you know patel is a majoritarian but he was in charge of minority think something okay so that you will go to your mind so historical background read fastly less priority because no questions has been asked so far from this area in the prelims examination okay but however when you read analytically it reinforces modern india it also give more ideas for you to cover the prelims examination concept based questions now salient feature is the most important area salient feature of indian constitution you have to spend more time you know you need to have a detailed theory okay whatever there in lakshmi kant book is not enough okay the salient features as you know as well as preamble both okay so if you have attended my class class notes revisit the class notes because i have covered the tutorials in in detail for uh, uh, prelims examination as well as mains point of view so reread them okay that will help you to take questions on this area those who have not attended my class there is a book 11th standard book political science and international relation okay psr uh, 11th standard book the name of the book is introduction to political theory okay introduction to political theory those who have attended my class my class notes is enough because from those important points as well as other points i have told in the class itself and i have cut down unnecessary things from that book okay so don't waste time if you have attended the class stick to my class notes if not you have attended my class notes then i suggest to read that book then citizenship it is third priority so far they have not asked any questions from citizenship chapter okay so first read salient features preamble then fundamental rights bpsp fundamental duties then historical background and finally citizenship chapter the recent amendments to the citizenship citizenship amendment act nrc npr census those areas you read okay there may be a question on national population register national register on citizen caa citizenship amendment act census okay census that house listing uh, socio economic census okay so those areas can they, be, they can be covered fundamental right is important repeatedly they are asking at least one question at least one question every year from fundamental rights part now what you will do is you will memorize all the fundamental rights that is a wrong strategy in the lakshmi ganth book and institute book first there will be you know characteristic feature of fundamental rights okay you have to read that now what are the characteristic features you know most of the uh, fundamental rights is available against state only okay some of the fundamental rights is available against private individual also that is one of the character right now you have to go and study each article and see which of the article is available against state only which are the uh, articles which is available for, for private individual also okay you do the work when you do only you will understand the fundamental rights part i'll give some some you know not exhaustive but some article 17 abolition of fundamentality against private individual article 23 against private individual article 24 against private individual article 15 class 2 against private individual okay only at a deeper look you will be able to identify all these okay So which of the articles article 15 class 2 17 23 24 and the remaining and all cross check whether it is only against state why it is not against private individual think see you should ask why question always why this is available against private individual why this is only against state you will get answer and easily your mind also will record that in mind so in examination when they ask tricky questions you will be able to think most of the time fundamental right questions you will put wrongly and come is because you will literally linearly study fundamental rights you should not do that you should study fundamental rights through characteristic features 
okay so first characteristic feature you know i said it is available against the state see here also keyword when you have study the char characteristic features no most of the time they will ask fundamental rights are against the state in examination or looking at, the, at against the state you think fundamental rights is in constitution how come it is against the state it is against the power of the state so you have read the character and you have cross checked all the thing so you are able to uh, keep in mind okay this character as well as the respective article some of the rights is available only for citizens some are available for foreigners also so which are the rights that is available for citizen you know please cooperate with me quickly take take note article 15 16 19 29 30 there is one article article 22 class 1 it is not available for enemy aliens article 22 class 1 is not available for enemy aliens remaining all the articles is available for foreigners also remaining all the articles are for foreigners also now fundamental rights are not absolute they have reasonable restriction right that is another character now there are some fundamental rights which is absolute what are they article 17 and article 30 the absolute fundamental right they don't have reasonable restrictions now go and cross check why other are having reasonable restrictions okay now the excess some are negative some are positive okay some rights are negative and some are positive some are negative rights some are positive rights so you have to see each article article 14 in article 14 equality before law is negative equal protection of law is positive i'll tell you what is negative and what is positive because most of you will confuse here only negative means absence of action positive means there is some action okay negative means absence of action positive means there is no action so equality before law no action from the state equal protection of law there is action from the state so we call it as positive article 15 negative article 16 negative the state shall not discriminate there is no intervention of state the exemptions to this article will be positive leave that i don't want to confuse you but we just see articles article 17 abolition of untouchability it is positive see why it is positive here you may say abolition of untouchability means the state has to abolish untouchability state should do some action and the state should create a law to punish people who are involved in untouchability so abolition of untouchability is positive okay abolition of titles see the content you know The, the topic is abolition of titles they are doing it one time abolition and in the content will say the state shall not give title to its citizen the citizen shall not receive okay so article 18 is negative article 18 is negative freedom of speech and expression freedom of assembly association occupation and all whether it's negative or positive give me answers no you may think it is negative but it is not negative see positive is there should be action of state as well as state will give some privilege to the citizens so freedom of speech and expression is like a privilege and you know whenever freedom of speech and expression is violated the state goes and acts reason charlie hebdo incident in france that explains you now the state goes and supports the freedom of speech and expression of the individual so it is positive what about uh, article 21 it is negative but it has been made positive by inferred rights the original article 21 is there shall be no curtailment of right to life and liberty except according to procedure established by law but later on they changed it to due process of law and said you will should give additional right to clean uh, environment right to food right to water right to information and all order so originally it was negative it was made positive by inferred rights article 22 negative article 23 24 positive because the state has to provide rehabilitation welfare article 25 positive right article 26 negative article 27 negative now you guys know if you try to memorize this you will not be able to remember now i am able to tell because i have thought through why it is positive why it is negative negative means there won't be action of the state there will be no state intervention positive means it will be giving some privilege to the citizens or there will be some action of the state state will act to ensure it article 30 is positive article 30 is positive article 29 negative okay article 28 there there is while some provisions positive negative they won't go that far so leave that article okay you just think through okay next is uh, fundamental rights are justiciable okay fundamental rights are justiciable and you know that okay justiciable means you can go to the court of law you can directly go to the supreme court okay so article 32 okay so through that you can learn article 32 then very important they are not sacrosanct and permanent they are not sacrosanct and permanent okay this point you leave it when you are they're asking in the uh, examination they say fundamental rights are sacrosanct first time those who read it will feel that it is a correct statement sacrosanct means something holy so you think fundamental rights are so holy it's true but why we are saying it is not sacrosanct it it can be changed it can be amended 
if something is sacrosanct we cannot change it but fundamental rights can be changed so remember fundamental rights is not sacrosanct and it is not permanent and as you know fundamental rights can be suspended okay so which rights are suspended when and why fundamental rights can be suspended during emergency okay so the, those points you can learn that is easy for you okay now another important point okay so there are some fundamental rights which are non self executory some are self executory some are self executory some are non self executory okay so i'll tell you what are the what, what is self executory if uh, fundamental right is ex implemented by itself fine self executory but it is not complete parliament has to legislate then only it can be implemented means it is non self executory when we need a parliamentary law to execute implement a fundamental right then it is non self executory non self executory it cannot be implemented executed by itself the word executory means implementable example untouchability article 17 article 23 article 24 these and all these uh, these articles uh, forced labor child labor prevention untouchability and all cannot be implemented by itself can we abolish untouchability just by saying uh, untouchability is abolished no that is not possible okay so that is why they are saying let's go for a parliamentary law let a parliamentary law be created and that law will help in implementation of these articles so these articles are non self executory so article 17 article 23 24 article 33 34 are non self executory further you go and check the list there are two more points and this exercise will ensure that you need not reread the fundamental rights again you easily internalize them so what are the non self executory articles article 17 23 24 33 and 34 other articles you know in article 16 and 32 one provision alone not the entire article article 16 and 32 one provision is non self executory you check and find out what provision is that fine now one more thing okay in uh, book you have the significance of fundamental rights see for all salient features fundamental rights dpsp fundamental duties their characteristics and significance you have to read okay so there is a topic significance of fundamental rights in that you know when you read that characteristics you will find some words fundamental rights helps us in moral development fundamental rights is limitation of the state power fundamental rights protects the individual liberty so they have not mentioned lakshmi gandhi or uh, institute book would have not mentioned an article in that you just connected to an article you will understand the concept and the concept will get into your mind there is one word fundamental rights will give moral development how moral development there is no child labor so you can use your uh, childhood for your uh, development there is no forced labor there, there is no beggar system there is no you know forced prostitution so which and all helps in a moral life so it is helps in moral development there is right to occupation there is right to assembly so material development is possible so the significance area from that read the fundamental rights so far you would have been making the mistake you would have skipped these characters and uh, the significance of fundamental rights and read the articles linearly you will never understand fundamental rights and even if you read you will not be able to answer so follow this method easily you can complete even revision will not be required much maybe at before the examination this article numbers once again whatever you have prepared you have to memorize and go again okay just not to make any mistake now otherwise uh, conceptual understanding and all will stay stick into your mind not a problem okay okay in dpsp how they will ask the questions okay so this is where very important you need to always categorize things you need to categorize so in dpsp usually how they will ask what is gandhian principle what is social principle what is liberal intellectual principles instead of literally reading divide categorize so how you are categorizing based on ideologies and based on what is newly added newly added why it is added so this is the scope of the prelims examination cooperative societies why they have added production of environment what why they added okay so like that if you uh, read that is enough for mains what are the hurdles in implementation of dpsp so now you need not prepare in that way okay but make note how to in case of dpsp what are the hurdles in implementing the existing dpsp okay then uh, you know you should see for the exceptions on base so this one strategy is you no know, how to read part now this strategy you don't only use here okay i am giving an example how to categorize in dpsp in fundamental rights also you can categorize out can categorize what are political rights what are social rights what are cultural rights so last year they asked a question untouchability comes under which part of the fundamental rights right to equality literally 
Okay, the, you may say, sir, it is right against exploitation also. Yes, but in constitution, under which category they have given? Right to equality. So you, you can categorize, form groups, okay? Similar kind of articles you should relate and say. Then exceptions, you have to read the exceptions. That is very important. Another technique it is. So what are the directives which is given outside DPSP? This, this you can apply across quality. So what is the characteristics of DPSP? DPSP is non-justiciable. So which are till now non-justiciable, which are justiciable? That categorization you don't prepare. Okay, so which of the DPSPs have been made justiciable? For example, Article 40 made justiciable. Okay, in Article 42, social security, labor legislation has been created. Then uh, Article 43, village industries, some schemes have been developed. So you should categorize which are being just made justified, which are made schemes like that. You have to categorize. So they may ask a question. Okay. Then what are the reasons for being non-justiciable is the main question. But you know what are justiciable, what are not justiciable is prudence question. Next is DPSP can be made justiciable or enforceable by law. DPSP can be made justiciable. By court of law. See, this is a repeat question in prelims examination. Now, you tell me which statement is correct, which statement is wrong. One statement is correct, one statement is wrong. Once again, don't think, you know, when I type something is correct. Okay, wait for the discussion. Yes, I want answers. Very good. The first statement is correct. Statement is correct. Because by parliamentary law, you can make DPSP justiceable. Okay, so first we are learning, you no, know, it's non justiciable. Immediately when you say justiciable, you make confused. It is justiciable or enforceable by law. When it is given law, it is parliamentary law meaning. But when they are giving DPSP can be made justiciable by court of law, it means judiciary. So since you know law is given in both sentences, you should not think both are same. So second statement is wrong. Okay. So if you know this classification, fine. Likewise, you apply for uh, fundamental duties also. What is the character of fundamental duties? Non-justiciable, same thing. It can be enforced by law, but it cannot be enforced by court, court of law. Same for Fundamental duty is also same thing. For preamble, also same thing. Okay, so they have common characteristics, features. Okay, so they are repeatedly asking this question once in two years. Okay, if you have a clear cut idea here, you won't uh, put wrongly in that question. This year also we had one question. Okay, with respect to DPSP, they have asked the same question with reference to provisions contained in Part Four of the Constitution. Which of the following statement is correct? They shall be enforceable by courts. Statement is correct or wrong? I'll repeat the statement. DPSP shall be enforceable by courts. Wrong statement. They shall not be enforceable by any court. I'll repeat. They shall not be enforceable by any court. Correct or wrong? Correct. Statement is correct. Okay. It cannot. No court cannot be. So the third statement I'm not you know because not relevant to our discussion, but this point is repeated for DPSP and fundamental duties. They don't ask what is the what exactly. Okay, if at all question is coming from DPSP and fundamental duties, either it is based on ideologies or newly added exceptions or characterizations. So I've given you the priority areas. So how to deal with uh, you no know, direct questions? I told that direct and factual questions go fast. Don't wait. Interpretative questions. Okay. When I discuss few questions, no, uh, at the end you, know, you will understand that some three four questions I'll do. With that you can understand you know how to go for interpretation questions. Before that. Some more, you know, uh, approach to pre prepare Indian polity. So as I told you already, you should first, uh, after reading a provision, you should ask why that provision is there. Why that provision is there? What will happen if the provision is not there? What will happen if the provision is not there? Then third, you have to, you know, have a real-time example. So if you are uh, reading speaker's power, no. When I read speaker's powers, uh, you know, at that time, you know, Somnath Chatterjee's tenure ended and Meera Kumar uh, took over as speaker. Okay, now you will be calculating my age, I know. First time when I read uh, polity, they were there. So based on them, still I remember the functions of speaker. Okay, even in the middle of the night, you wake me up and ask, what are the functions of speaker? I will be able to tell by remembering their faces. So real time examples, if you call it as associate memory. Then only you will not get confused in the examination hall, okay, for clarity purposes. Then key concepts, define them in your own words and memorize them. 
have memorized like this federalism two or more government division of powers state autonomy these are the key words in federalism parliamentary form of government interdependence and coordination between executive and legislature sovereignty externally independent internally supreme secularism equal uh, respect to all religions and principle distance to all religions thinking that secularism is principle distance uh, i know why it is called as principle distance i have some examples in my mind so any question on secularism i can easily handle now you may ask sir where are these definitions it is there in your book there in your book only thing is you have to take a short version because federalism they'll explain five six lines in two lines shortly what is federalism if one statement is giving an idea sentence is giving you the idea mark it memorize it so in case of you know concept based question is coming you can apply that definition and you will be able to easily arrive at the answer okay so define your know over words like that exa- exactly i told you know salient features and preamble sovereignty socialism secularism federalism independent judiciary integrated judiciary okay single citizenship for all of them you have a definition in your own words and then as i told you know categorize things okay categorize i gave you the example through dpsp okay exemptions also another thing okay uh, that also i explained okay now you know you have to read polity like making law what is the process of making law three readings so how to read first time read casually so for the first test okay till uh, fundamental duties is there rapidly fastly read everything don't bother to memorize or understand just you know to get uh, familiarity with the words to read through whatever understanding you are getting fine with that in second time previous year questions 2015 to 2019 previous year questions review them and then now you read in depth you will get orientation and also i i, I told you where to concentrate follow that approach also that is the third third reading a question paper in depth reading and then with my approach you read your reading is complete okay so this is uh, about your approaches okay so if you follow this approach okay quality is going to be a cake walk for you now sometimes you will not get real time example for what you are reading okay so at that time what you have to do is you imagine something okay just like you know assume that you know you are being a district collector and if this particular provision is there how will you implement it or uh, how it will protect your interests like that and all if you think no you will be able to easily remember the articles or when you reading president read as if you are the president of india okay so what are the areas where you can exercise powers where are the loopholes you can play with okay like that if you think automatically you know it will be interesting and you will remember for life and you will become a efficient bureaucrat also fine next is yeah some previous questions as i said i will we will discuss that to get an idea see this question is from salient features parliamentary system of government usually it will come federal form of government in independent judiciary the salient features repeatedly they are asking this is 2020 question okay 2020 question first all political parties in the par- parliament are represented in the government see i have remembered like this parliament means parliamentary form of government means interdependent and coordination between executive and legislature executive and uh, legislature is coordinating and they are interdependent meaning if prime minister does not work properly lok sabha can remove the prime minister if lok sabha is not working properly prime minister can remove so both will cooperate fine so read the answers no first one will not come all political parties in the parliament are represented in the government that is not possible okay so by real time example the government is responsible to the parliament and can be removed by it whatever definition no the same definition is in different words that's all so that is why i asked you to create definition in your own words for this talent features and preamble from the book itself okay in a short form whenever that question is coming that definition should bang on your mind then the government is elected by the people and can be removed by them the government is elected by the people okay that is democracy and the people cannot remove the government right okay so even even if you are saying through elections they can be removed it is democracy it's not parliamentary form then government is chosen by the parliament but cannot be removed by it before completion of a fixed term okay so no not like that government is responsible to the parliament and can be removed by it is the most appropriate answer here while taking the questions you will overlook the words first time when a person reads this statement the constitution of india defines its basic structure in terms of federalism secularism fundamental rights and democracy okay you will you will feel it is correct yes because federalism is basic structure secularism is basic structure fundamental rights but 
you would have overlooked the word defines is it the constitution which defines the basic structure no judiciary defines so the statement is wrong so you would have overlooked that said you know many of them in 2020 examination they put it wrong the statement then this one constitution of india provides for judicial review to safeguard the citizens liberties and to preserve the ideals on which the constitution is based reading the second third line and fourth line you will feel that yes it is correct okay and but reading this judicial review purposefully you know they have given this quote so in the first statement you will read basic structure only here you will be re- looking judicial review and uh, you would have already learned in the books that judicial review word is not given in the constitution that is highlighted in various tests also okay so you will think that you know constitution does not provide for judicial review but look at this word they are not saying constitution of india defines judicial review it says provides for judicial review so the exact word may not be there that but the mechanism is there so the second statement alone is correct okay so two only is the correct answer so don't overlook in quality there will be generally you will be overlooking sometimes you will have a confusion how to answer whether by interpretation go by the constitution always go by the constitution what is given in the constitution no? based on that okay okay this uh, this question we already saw impossible by okay now think like a bureaucrat when you are answering quality questions think like a bureaucrat suppose they are asking the true meaning of freedom of speech and expression they may be given okay freedom of speech and expression is your freedom to say whatever you want then freedom of speech and expression is uh, limited by restrictions so both appear to be correct answer but restriction is the correct answer because as for bureaucrat restriction is important there was one question in 2018 which one of the following reflects the most appropriate relationship between law and liberty most appropriate relationship between law and liberty so there was a dilemma in that year okay between these two no law no liberty frequent change of law will be danger to liberty now people you know find it very difficult to find answer because both appears to be correct no law no liberty means if there is no law might will be right whoever is having power in the society they will get all the liberty but when there is law all will get equal liberty even the weaker section will get liberty so law must be there to ensure liberty for all if law is not there liberty will be smashed by the powerful so there must be a law in order to have liberty fine next frequent change of law will danger to liberty true see if the law is constantly changed you will not be free to act today they will say walking 1 km is uh, your freedom tomorrow a change of law walking 1 km is not is illegal for example recent company laws no within 3 years they cha- changed uh, many times many amendments were made companies law amendment act 2013 companies law amendment act 2016 company laws amendment act 2019 frequent change so what happen business people feel that they don't have liberty they not know what what to be done so frequent change of law will be danger to liberty now this is a interpretation based question how to deal with it put bureaucratic filter now think as a bureaucrat as a bureaucrat will you go for the first definition or second definition you tell me as a bureaucrat you have to maintain the law and order first one is correct very good okay first one is correct because you want to maintain law and order you want law so that you can maintain liberty for all citizens but frequent change of law will danger to be liberty will be a statement given by an activist okay so quality interpretation based questions usually will be like this whether you look in the perspective of activist or whether you look in the perspective of bureaucrat in upsc you have to give the answer based on the perspective of bureaucrat think already you are a bureaucrat what is your job based on that interpret the fundamental rights based on that interpret the constitution see i'll give this governor's office is an independent constitutional authority now whether the statement is correct or not government office is independent constitutional authority as per constitution you are a bureaucrat who will be going to implement the constitution okay so you will say that governor's office is a independent constitutional authority think like a bureaucrat okay not like a journalist or a activist now i am making a statement governor should not be appointed by the central government i am giving a statement it is a opinion now whether the statement is correct or not i would say it's wrong because for bureaucrats we need unity of the country that is our priority so central government only should appoint the governor then only the administration will be proper otherwise states may declare independence for themselves state may act against the interest of the union government there won't be coordination between center and the states 
So this is why I'm asking you know, an interpretation based question. Okay, you go for bureaucratic uh, this thing. And now, you know, I would like you to watch uh, my YouTube video in Shankar A.S. Academy uh, channel. Okay. Now I told you, you know, after first reading, you have to uh, uh, read the uh, previous year question, then only you have to answer. So I have done it for you. Okay, selecting important questions, quality question. Part one, part two, two parts are there. And uh, I've been teaching here for nine years. And I've cleared uh, five prelims continuously with these techniques and five consecutive interview interviews. So I have cleared with these strategies. Okay. And these strategies have never pulled me down. Even now I'm confident if you give me any paper, I'll score 120 plus. So that is because of the practice that I know I've shared my experience here. Done. I pray to God that, you know, you do well all the tests. You are able to prepare. Good health is there. Good mental uh, uh, attitude is there. No family problems. Everybody is supporting you. And this coming attempt, you are clearing. Especially for the repeaters, no? Don't ever uh, worry. There are people who have got uh, service in fourth attempt, for fifth attempt and all. I don't want to say that you will take that much attempt. The coming attempt, you will clear. Okay? So work with all hope. Okay? Thank you all. God bless you.